In a previous video, I talked about what we can do with small sample sizes um, if we're trying to find a confidence interval for the mean. So the t-distribution, which I'll introduce in this video, is a tool for getting confidence intervals around the mean if we have a small sample size. This requires an assumption. So you suppose that x1 dot 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 all the way up through xn are a sample from a normal distribution. That is, it's not any distribution at all, like for the central limit theorem. We have to assume that we know the distribution and it's normal or approximately normal. If we don't know the distribution at all, if we can't say that it's normal, then it's really hard to build a confidence interval because we have no idea what the data is actually doing. Here's the definition of a t-distribution. The quantity of the sample mean minus the true mean. So the sample mean minus the true mean here, the difference of them, divided by the sample standard deviation over the square root of n. So this is like we were using to get the uh, one the confidence interval for the mean based on the central limit theorem. This has a t distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So this is the definition. You can take this as the definition of the t distribution. And the reason that it's not normal is because s itself is a random variable. Mu is a constant, n is a constant, x bar is a random variable, and s is a random variable because it's a function of the data. So that's why it's not just normal. Again, we say that it's a t-distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. And if you want to learn what degrees of freedom means or how to understand that, uh, you'll have to take more statistics classes. For us, we'll just take it as uh, notation. So one of the things that the book says is that uh, we should take n small. That is n less than 30. It's not necessary to assume that n is small, but let me show you what happens. So we take our... Suppose that this is our normal distribution, our normal bell curve. Okay? then a t distribution will, relative to a normal distribution, will be more spread out and smaller in height. So if that's the normal 0, 1, then a t will be something like this. That is, it's lower t distribution is lower, t is more spread out. And we're looking again at the, the PDF. So PDF, probability density function for normal 0, 1. That's what this black one is. And this is the PDF for a t distribution. So we can use a t-distribution to construct confidence intervals in kind of the same way that we did for normal. So with a, a normal distribution, we did something like uh, we have 1.96, and this has the property that inside here, this area equals 0 0.025. So that's why we use 1.96 for a confidence interval. So to find that number 1.96 in R, it's the quantile function. So Q norm for the normal distribution 
and we're looking for the quantile that's 0 0.975 for 95% confidence. And this was approximately 1.96. With a T distribution, so suppose N equals 5, so we have In R, we can write QT, 0 0.975. Degrees of freedom equals 4. And this is approximately 2.7. So you can also do this with a table. You can look up these values in the table just like you do with the Z table. You just have to know how many degrees of freedom you're using. You have to use that either in R or the table. You have to know that degrees of freedom. So then to plot it over here, we have 1.96. So these are both distributions are both centered at zero. We plot this... Uh, 2.78 over here. And this means that the area under the T curve on the right hand side, this orange area now, area equals 0 0.025 or 1 minus that and uh, 0 0.975 and we use that to get a 95% two-sided confidence interval. So just to restate this, if we have n equals 5 samples, they're approximately normally distributed and I'll say what we mean by that. Uh, for the purposes of this class, we'll say they're approximately normally distributed if there's no very obvious outliers, and it'll be obvious, so I'll show you in, in an example in another video. But well, I can do it right here. So what I mean is like, if this is our our data, we're plotting them along this line. If we have one here, one here, one here, one here, and another one way over here, this is an outlier. So the, for the purposes of this class, that's all we're really looking for. If the data doesn't look like this, if it's pretty much anything else, uh, then that's okay. You know, we, we're going to say, okay, assume that it's approximately normal. Then we can make this 95% confidence interval for five samples. We have X bar plus or minus. 2.78 times s over square root of n. So the only difference from the z-based confidence interval that we're doing for the central limit theorem is that we are replacing, this would be 1.96 if it were normal. But since it's not normal, we only have five data points, then our confidence interval becomes wider because we're less sure.